Hello everyone. Welcome back to the lecture. So now we'll try to understand about the inverted beam. Okay. So these beams are called as inverted beam. So I'll show you an image for that. So practically this is called as inverted beam. What has happened? You know, see, you have a beam here, but this, this is not an inverted beam. It's a regular beam. So this beam, what you can see, it's a regular beam. Whereas this particular beam, you, you can see, you know, it's called as inverted beam. The slab is here. Over the slab, you put the beam. So this beam and this beam, both are called as inverted beam. This entire beam, what you can see, you know, this is also inverted beam. I'll show you one more image. So can you see it here? Your slab is here. So this is inverted beam. This is also inverted beam. And this is also inverted beam. Over the slab, these beams are coming. So you remember this particular place. You remember this particular place. So this is your hall area, right? So once the concreting is done, no, once this entire slab concreting is done, it will look something like this. You see, the slab concreting has been done. Always remember, usually what happens? No, see how this concreting will happen. So if the slab thickness is 150 mm, so this 150 will come somewhere here. Let us say your slab will be concreted up to this portion. Okay, up to this portion. That means up to this portion, your half of the beam is concreted. Here also half of the beam is concreted. That means this 150 mm you have, this is 150 mm height. So let us say this entire portion 150 is coming here. So this much 150 concreting will happen. Remaining portion concreting will happen on a later date. Always understand that. So this concreting for the inverted beam will happen in two stages. Okay. This is stage number one. Along with the slab, all the concreting will happen. And the remaining portion of this beam will happen on a later date. Okay. So once it is done, it will look something like this. Now you may get an idea. See, first this slab concreting happened. After the slab concreting, this particular area, we did shuttering again and we did the concreting. So here, when the slab concreting happened, it happened up to here also. It will happen up to here. Okay. Then this is a remaining area. Now this is your hall area. Now if you see here, yeah, this is your hall area. So here that inverted beam also will come here. So one beam will come here, inverted beam will come here, all the slab centering and all will be done. Then along with this, this entire portion concreting will happen. Understood, no? So this is how the entire, uh, uh, this thing, what is that? Uh, inverted beam is going to look. I'll show you one more image for that. I think I should have one more image for that. Okay, I'll show you one more image for that. Hmm? Let me show you. Give me a minute. I'll show you one more image for that. Yeah, so it will look something like this. I was, I'm showing you one more image for the same building. See, here you have a half of the beam. This is your another column. So in between, you don't have any column, which was there in the drawing. So next, what will happen? You'll put the beam bottom like this. And this also will do the shuttering like this. Then your slab is going to come. And then this entire area concreting will happen. Okay, good. Now I'll show you one more uh, image for that. Uh, yeah, so I think I should show this particular image. So once that everything is casted, you no, know, it will look something like this. See, uh, try to underst understand the difference now. Yeah, here you can make out. So this was that normal slab, and this was your uh, in this was your another slab, uh, that hall marriage portion slab. This is your inverted beam. You can see a beam here. It's an inverted beam. So how this inverted beam will be done? Half of the beam will go below. Half of the beam is above the slab. So it's called as an inverted beam. Okay, fine. So I'll show you this uh, one more image here. You try to observe. So if you see all these beams, no, these beams, all these are your inverted beams. Okay, I'll show you one more image, uh, one more video for this. Uh, maybe this one. Yeah, uh, yeah. This particular. So you can see it here, no? Of course, now you cannot make a difference because all these things happen later. I have explained all these things in the uh, uh, next lecture, but just concentrate on the inverted beam. So all these are your inverted beam. This is also inverted beam. This is also inverted beam. This is also inverted beam. Understood, no? So that is how the inverted beams look. Inverted beams look. Now, what is the difference between the inverted beam and the normal beam? What we have? We'll try to discuss on that. Okay. So first, let me go back here. Yeah. So what is the difference between a normal beam and the inverted beam? So for that, you have to understand one concept. If you remember, I told you earlier that 
i'll do it here that whatever is a total shear force v is a total shear force that will come on your beam so whatever is a total shear force half of the shear force will be taken by the concrete vc and half of the shear force will be taken by the stirrup isn't it that is how we design the uh, that is how we design the normal beam that is how we design the stirrup and all so let us say if there is a 100 kilo newton of a shear force coming let us consider that 50 kilo newton of the shear force will be taken by the concrete and remaining 50 kilo newton whatever shear force i have i'll design my stirrups to take care of the shear force so in the normal beam this is what we practice in case of inverted beam what we do in case of inverted we we, we say that whatever shear force is coming entire shear force will be taken by the stirrup and concrete will not take any shear force so let us say in case of inverted beam let us say again vu is a total shear force so vc is a shear what happened yeah yeah vc is a shear force taken by the concrete and vs is a shear force taken by the stirrup so in case of inverted beam let us say if the shear force coming is 100 kilo newton we say that my concrete will take zero shear force and remaining 100 whatever is a complete shear force no 100 kilo newton shear force is coming that 100 kilo newton shear force will be taken by the stirrup that means i'll design my stirrup to take care of a 100 kilo newton shear force so why it has to be done so usually what happens you see how the concreting is done half of the concrete has happened here remaining half of the concrete will happen on the later date so since uh, this is the old surface and the new concrete which comes here so there exists a kind of a cold joint this particular joint what is coming here it's a cold joint since it's a cold joint what we told in the designing we told that concrete also can take shear but since it's a cold joint and all we'll say that no concrete cannot take the shear we'll design our entire stirrup to take care of the shear force that is the difference between a normal beam designing and the inverted beam designing okay that one concept you need to understand how inverted beam is different from the normal beam rest all designing method and all everything is same only the thing is when it comes to the shear force no we will say that entire shear force will be taken by the stirrup in case of inverted beam and my concrete will not participate in taking any shear force normal beam my uh, concrete also will take shear force and stirrup will design for the remaining shear force understood now that is the one concept which you need to understand and this particular joint it's a cold joint what will happen i'll show you one more image for that also uh, i think uh, this also you see it's on the other side you see here here half of the beam is casted remaining ha half of the beam will be casted later along with the slab so this is a joint now already it's a older surface a joint will happen it's a called as it's called as a cold joint so that is why we say my concrete cannot take the shear force let entire shear force be taken by the stirrup that's it so this was the entire thing about the uh this thing what is that um uh, inverted beam i'll show you one uh drawing for that the cross section drawing you'll be able to understand see here can you see it here this portion So you can see you now this is how the inverted beam is given so this is how the inverted beam is given so this is how the inverted beam is given okay so that is a cross section of a inverted beam and practically that is how the inverted beam is given so i hope you have understood the concept of the inverted beam um, whenever we don't want the depth of the beam to be more and seen in the inner surface we usually go with the inverted beam that's it so i hope you have enjoyed my lecture up to here and i'll see you back in the next lecture thank you